our next video in sequence from the Minim supporters is from JJ. And JJ has a really great long history with the Orchestration Online website. He's been, he's got his own channel. He is, I think, motivated like few other members to do, you know, to do the kind of work that I do in terms of, um, you know, raising the conversation and mentoring people both on basic concepts and on very complicated ones. And uh, he's just really done uh, a lot of great work and, and had a really great community presence. And he will always give me something to talk about. <laughs> and so <laughs> with that introduction... You know, as you just heard, there really is a lot to talk about in this score. Okay, now, just because I don't agree with a lot of the approaches that JJ took here uh, doesn't mean that they're wrong or bad or that they don't work. They're just, you know, some of them are strikingly unusual. Some of them may actually work out the way that JJ wants it more than he, the way that I do. Okay, so with all of those lame caveats, I will now make my attempt to... Uh, give my ideas about this, my impressions of this. Okay, so first thing is double bass, staccato, contrabassoon, also staccato, same dynamic, and the notes are a whole step apart. The thing that I worry about here is that since both instruments have a different kind of attack and a different way of enhancing overtones, Right you now, like what what is the overtone of the that instrument? You know, what does it excite more than other? What is its timbre? You know, in you know in the mid range of its overtones, since those are somewhat different when the instruments are separated like this, the ear of the listener will have a tendency to try to squash them back together. You know what I mean? So, if your intention was to put the listener's ear into conflict like that, then you achieved your goal. Right. So, but I would say otherwise, it might be safer just to go like um, divisi on this and have contrabassoon plus tuba, or um, or to have like a E in the contrabassoon and a low D in the bass bassoons to sort of catch that other tone or or whatever, or have two contrabassoons. You know, that was not that was not against the rules according to the um, to the stipulation. But this is kind of a cool. I mean, it is a it is a neat idea um, in terms of making these pitches feel equal in weight and in you know in in the way that they will operate to the ear. It is it is not the most elegant solution though, right? Um, but anyways, that's that's just once again that's my impression. That's not necessarily the right way to look at this. Okay, and this was nice too. Kind of curious as to why the why the timpani only comes in on the second stroke of this you know this sort of quasi drum idea in the original Bartok score I mean it's it's really effective though but I mean this could have come in um, you know could have come in a little bit uh, you know like on that one but whatever but I guess you're adding right you're going you know there's this much then there's this much and then there's that much and I do get that I think in this case you don't need to mark it down to mezzo forte because you're not really, you know, you're not really blotting anybody out. It's okay to do seco strokes. I think that's really really great. You know, just to have like a a an eighth note stroke with an immediate damping. I think that that's cool, and it should actually be marked seco, right? Just like so that it's absolutely totally understood that that is your intention. Yes, yeah, sure. I mean, you got a staccato on that, but I think you should just really overdo it. You know, gild the lily. All right. So just, you know, let the player know right away you just really want that to be cut off. Um, and you should also, you know, it wouldn't hurt to, to mention that here too if you really want everybody to just really fall into line. Not that it's wrong, but I'm just saying, you know, insurance. And that helps you to offset that against <clears throat> this Tenuto passage, right? And it's, this is nice. I really like the way that this is marked. Um, tenuto, 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 staccato, accent. 
I think that that's really cool. You could have also put a tenuto right here. You know, dun 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 dun. Right? That that might have worked really, really really well. So anyway, um, and I also like the fact that this is differently. You know, this is the twelfth score that I've evaluated in three days, and <clears throat> this is really different from the way everybody else, including myself has chosen to interpret this, you know, instead of instead of just the way it's written in the piano, which is to really just kind of leapfrog back and forth. Bum 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 You went right? I thought that was really a cool idea because it really offsets the feel of these two ideas. Right? And it's also really cool to I mean literally in terms of timbre, it is a cool idea to to um, double cellos with bass clarinet, right? So it gives it a more kind of woody, more hollow kind of a sound doubling the cellos. Now, here I can see that you want a really even blend, right? You, you really kind of want the bass clarinet and cello tones to be really equal, right? Which is why you're scoring forte here and mezzo forte there. All the same? I think that they should just both be forte, okay? I think that the player, I think sitting in the seats, listening to their part next to the cellos, I think that they will know to blend and that they will know to make it work, okay? So I, I don't feel that the cellos should be down to mezzo forte. <clears throat> And, you know, a strong, an argument could be made that these don't need to be mezzo forte either, right, to a degree. It's a, maybe a little too cautious. Same thing here. All right. Because, you know, part of it is just about inflection, right? So, like, how much wrist is the player going to put into something that's marked forte as opposed to mezzo forte, right? They're going to give it a little bit more wrist, and I think that that's kind of what you need right here in order to bring it out. All right. And I, I really love this reaction here in... <clears throat> in the trombones, you know, bum, 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 bum. And you've got the dissonance here, right? The A below and the B flat above. And that is a really cool way to solve that problem. And in, I don't, I don't know if somebody gave you advice on not just throwing in a pedal tone like it was nothing. And that was a good idea, right? Because you don't know how great your players are. So, so this was a good solution. Okay. I like that a lot. And um, and this was nice too, this combined hit, contrabassoon and um, <clears throat> and trombones. That's really nice and solid. Kind of feel like I I, mean, I see why you left it out here in the double basses because you're about to to come in there with a the dovetailing idea. So you kind of don't want this to be too too cluttered up down here. Okay. Well, anyway, double basses plus bassoons is nice, and it's something that. <clears throat> that, you know, is not the most obvious choice. It's not really going to dovetail the way that you've got it here. Like, you know, because the because you're going from cool blend with cellos to, you know, much warmer blend with a, a kind of, not duller, I hate the word duller, but a more muted sort of pitch right here with, you know, this is going to be heavier. It's going to be less um, bright of a tone in the double basses. I, I feel like I'm talking about somebody's intelligence. <laughs> oh, those double basses, they aren't as bright as the cellos who are, you know, that's, that's not what I mean at all. But, you know, it, it's, you know, where is the voice in the face, right? Where is the, where is the timbre going to sit? You know, as if these instruments were different voices of different human beings, right? So, so this will not really dovetail in a in a in a seamless way, all right. And I will have more to say about seamless dovetailing as we go. <clears throat> all right. So nice hit here, and I think that in this case, since it's really just kind of cellos and bassoons, it's not too bad that it sustains on as the melody continues, but it really should come down a little bit. Almost like forte piano here, right? Because your lower instruments could easily be overwhelmed just by the resonance of, you know, a bassoon plus cellos kind of just sitting on that E, 
All right, and you can actually hear a little bit of that in the playback to a degree. Not as bad as it could be, but yeah. And this would not be as bad as it could be either, but the you can bet that the conductor will be looking at the bassoon if it stands out like a thumb here, right? So you'll just have to write FP in there, I think, if you want to get this ready for the stands. That's my two cents on that. And then put a diminuendo right here at the end, and then you're sorted. <clears throat> All right. Nice to have a little snap pits. This is Bartok piece, so that's really, really nicely done right in there. So now we go to... <clears throat> um, we go to the next statement of the melody within, once again, first and third horn. As I said in Alberto's uh, previous... Uh, evaluation, I feel that, once again, just try to pair up, uh, you, you know, when when, when the instruments are not really playing anything that is necessarily uh, a characteristically high part, um, and where partnership, in order to get things absolutely beautifully in sync, is important, then I think it really is better to have Atu in the first and second. Right, rather than having both both high players play a low part, right? It doesn't. It makes less sense to do that than it does. You know, if you really wanted to to stick with high and low roles, you could have had, you know, this be both, um, you know, second and fourth, and then going to first and third here. Okay, but look, it, even this, which doesn't really scream, would be better off with first and second, right? Okay. And then the, this is all fine. This is similar. This is like an octave higher than Alberto's <clears throat> idea. The same thing, off four horns playing on that E. Okay. <laughs> so going back to here, this is neat. Adding the little touch of Atu trombones. Uh, bump, 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 bump. And then the little reaction, sort of mimicking what happened before in the trombones. Bump, 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 bump. Dun, 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 dun. And it's, it's, there is a trade-off inherent here, right? Um, and it doesn't quite, like, just a single trombone here, I don't feel carries the melody into the horns quite as effectively as, um as it would were this, um, you know, were there more players, right? Because, I mean, you have to look at it. Right here, you've got two players, then you've got four players, and then you've got um, a reaction that's quite, quite big. It's like four instruments reacting. Then you have a single trombone marked mezzo forte that is carrying through just completely solo, nothing else around it. Right? So this kind of naked area right here is what I feel is the least convincing in terms of keeping the fabric of the music consistent, right, in terms of strength. Now, okay, so if you really want that completely lone, isolated pitch there, then that's totally cool. So, so yeah, so, so don't, but don't take that as a big critique or anything like that. Okay, and then you've got a big whack right there. <clears throat> which works great. And then <coughs> this is kind of nice. The um you know, continuing on kind of like with with three instruments kind of all conspiring together, you know, in octaves and that's pretty well balanced according to the Rimsky-Korsakoff model. That's all great. Um and you know, bass clarinet coming in here and then sort of providing the foil to bounce off with the double basses is nice. It makes me feel that there should just be a little bit, you know, if, if, if this is going to be so far away, the way that it's pitched from the top voice of the horn melody, it just feels like there needs to be a little bit more in there. I don't know what, but it just, it feels like it's a little barren, right? Um, but this is really nice here at the end. You know, this ba da 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 Most people are getting that right. It's It just begs to be orchestrated correctly, and everybody is pretty much doing that, right? So you're going bump together, boom. 
timpani thump bass drum it's nice it would be nice to have another like almost like a like you could go snare timpani bass snare timpani bass snare timpani bass right that would be kind of cool also kind of give a little bit more uh punctuation doubling the trumpets you know if there is a snare on the on the first note of that yeah so really cool score jj really gave me a lot to think about and a lot to contrast um you know some of some of my kind of safety <laughs> the way that i'm a, i'm a kind of i tend to be a sort of a safer orchestrator in a lot of ways uh, it doesn't make me a better orchestrator it just i'm just kind of kind of constantly thinking about well you know this part or that part could be done in a way that is less risky and so on and so forth but but it's great that you explored this in a way that was you know unique and and really shows a lot of care and a lot of thought and and you know just playing around with ideas and really being your own kind of orchestrator and that's great so i'd really much rather you be your own orchestrator than to be you know just somebody who takes my advice without questioning it so Really, really cool entry, and um, you know it would have been cool to see you go on with this and to evaluate more um, at you know, it, and you know I really hope that you enter the next orchestration challenge. I've got them planned out for the next two years. What the pieces are going to be, and I'm already kind of working on my own orchestrations way in advance of those two. So it would be great to see you involved with those. Thanks so much for this score, and now on to the next video. <laughs>